to Red Eye. Hello everyone, I am Tom Shalhoub. Let's check in with TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye Tease Deck. Andy? Thanks Tom. Coming up on the big show, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump says most of the people he's insulted on Twitter deserved it. Eleven more days, man. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Plus, half of Americans wish we could go back to the way things were in the 1950s. If this doesn't spark DeLorean sales, nothing will. <laughs> And finally, scientists say they've discovered a compound that makes old mice physically young again. Hardest hit by this? Old cats. It's like a Norm Macdonald joke, isn't it? <laughs> Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. Whenever she drives, she always takes the highway to the danger zone. Fox News correspondent Leah Gabriel. With a last name like his, I'm stunned he's sober. <laughs> Comedian Brendan Fitzgibbons. He's the perfect seasoning for all political conversation. Editor of National Review, Rich Lowry. And if we could drill into his soul, we'd be energy independent in a year. Sitting right next to me, comedian Andrew Schultz. <laughs> okay, let's start the show. Earlier this week, pro-Trump tabloid, the New York Times, published a two-page spread of all the people, places, and things Donald Trump has insulted on Twitter. Among the insults, Mitt Romney, really sad. Super Bowl 50, very boring. <laughs> the Grand Canyon, unimpressive. I've seen bigger canyons. I think that last one was made up. Possibly. But it was in, it was in the pocket, wasn't it? Yeah. Last week, Melania had announced she would take on cyberbullying as first lady. On Thursday, Trump was confronted about his Twitter insults on Good Morning America. Here's host and Clinton crony George Snuffleupagus, desperately <laughs> trying for a gotcha moment. People are hurt so badly by new social media. And she feels very strongly about it. She understands it very much. Well, it's very dangerous. The New York Times was all the people they say you've insulted well, that's on okay. Twitter. That's okay. Most of them deserved it. Were you one of them? <laughs> Actually, I wasn't. I was, I was a little surprised at that. I'm surprised. Let's go check it. I can't believe I didn't include you. <laughs> should have included him, right? I love it. Schultz, yeah. uh, he's very likable when he's insulting, isn't he? Yeah, I'm very supportive of insulting. I believe in public shaming, and I think it helps society. Do you think the New York Times was, uh, I mean, obviously they're going after him in I every way I just want to say I don't read the New York Times. You don't? It's too big. It's a, that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it's the a lot of size? folding and everything. I know. I like a nice iPad. You know, that's good. Or a yeah. phone. I like this. I, like, I can't a, do all this. I take the subway. You know? Okay. I'm blue collar. Okay. Uh, look, let's look at more of Trump's Twitter insults from that New York Times spread. Ben Carson. He has never created a job in his life. Well, maybe a nurse. <laughs> Jeb Bush. Had to bring in mommy to take a slap at me. <laughs> Rich Lowry. Clueless. <laughs> Rich Lowry. Incompetent. <laughs> Rich Lowry should not be allowed on TV. Rich Lowry, truly one of the dumbest of the talking heads. Wow. That, I think our audience is thinking I'm making those up. I don't think I am, am I? You're not. Rich, not no. if I recall correctly. Yes. You know, I don't, I don't mind this at a certain level. It's pundits, we talk and insult politicians he all talks the back. time. Yeah, so it's no problem with the politician hitting back. It's just so often it's so sophomoric. I wish the insults were better. Mm. And then also it's not a great look for President of the United States. But I'm with you. I don't know what is newsworthy about this that the New York Times felt compelled to take two pages of the newspaper to publish it. Really? These are old tweets. They're it's, old things. They're not new things. It is big. I mean, the, the funny thing about the Times is that they, you know, they want to be the paper of record. They're obviously biased. But in this season, They've become a silly organization, have they not? The lead slot in the New York Times, in the newspaper every morning, is almost exclusively devoted to anti-Trump stories. <laughs> for like, literally for the last three months, you think nothing good has ever happened to Donald Trump. Look, and he's not winning. A yeah. lot of bad things have happened, but he's also still on the hunt, and other things have happened. But they've really, the media's just convinced themselves they don't even have to pretend to be objective in this election. I was going to say, who does the New York Times think they are? National Review? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brendan? Yes. Uh, Trump is, I think he is, he's at his best when he's when he's counter-punching, is right. he not? But and do you agree that it's not, not presidential? I mean, I don't really see Washington or Lincoln as tweeters. Uh, they were more <laughs> duelers. They yes. usually uh, just shot people. So in a way, this is just an elevated, more technological version of dueling in a lot of ways. You don't think Lincoln would have tweeted? I think he was, he was witty with the, with the... 
I think like, he wanted to actually crush MySpace. Or <laughs> he liked, he liked <laughs> he insulting people. He, he did. did. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. attacked people in print. I think he would. Well, he would use. Uh, this is why he almost fought a duel. He he was right. in early in his career into writing anonymous articles, mocking and attacking people. Mm. And one guy found out that he had actually written it, challenged him, and they almost fought a duel, not with guns, but with. Cavalry broadsword. <laughs> exactly. Wow. And it was end. he insulted his manhood. I think he was making yes. jokes about his e manliness. Yes. Interesting, yes. right? So okay. Trump, maybe he's like Lincoln, right, Leah? Well, first I just want to correct the record because I believe the correct term for somebody who tweets is a Twitter. -er. Oh, wow. Oh. So now duels are being fought by Twitterers. Yeah. Twitterers. From what, not, from what I gather. They're not tweeters. No, I, I read Twitter. about this a while ago, so maybe it's yeah. changed. Okay. But last I checked, you're you if you tweet. You are a Twitterer. Yeah. Now I do think that it's worth uh, putting everything that somebody tweets when they're running for president out there, because when you tweet, you're putting something online. You're esen you're essentially publishing yourself. So if you have Twitter Tourette's, I think it's important that people are able to at least see what you've published in the past. But Trump thinks it's different. And even when he was defending himself, he said, "Oh well, those those insults. Well, that was on Twitter." He said, and they deserved it. <laughs> it doesn't count because it was a moment. I was like, I was having this like momentary you know thing going on in my brain. I'm just disappointed that you didn't get like an actual like name, like you know, crooked or dishonest. I didn't, I didn't or, rise to that because I think level. that that status right there. Yeah, if Donald Trump gives level. you a name, and maybe he will for me now. Yes. Then that you have status. But I also I just love Melania. You know, there's this whole parallel element to the Trump campaign, where Mike Pence is running a different campaign, and Kellyanne yeah. Conway is in a different universe, <laughs> and apparently his wife is too. If her, you know, her mission as first lady is going to be pushing back against cyber bullying. Yeah. <laughs> She's apparently never seen her husband's Twitter account. It's a well, great way to grow the, the electoral map, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, later, Melania joined the interview and was shocked to learn about her responsibilities in the home stretch of the campaign. Look. She's actually going to make two or three speeches. Oh. And I will tell you. <laughs> I made some news right there. <laughs> Yes, like any good husband I know, Donald Trump decides when his wife can speak and when she can't. <laughs> the campaign has not said when, when Melania will deliver the speeches, but we've obtained the themes of each. The first one is titled, I Have Dream. <laughs> Followed by, ask not what country does, ask what you does for country. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, tear wall down. <laughs> She's used to like, wait a minute. I like you it. Know funny? I support it. I support it, Shalou. I think no. those, the, first of all, I think those are good subjects for speeches. Yes, and great subjects. And she has always been inspired. I don't know why, why Rich is, is moaning over there. I know. She's always been inspired by the great <laughs> speeches. She's a big softy over here. It's okay, I don't want Melania to start attacking me on Twitter too. No, that's, right. that's not going to happen. <laughs> Maybe she will now. Maybe I've if actually, Michelle attacks you first, she'll take a tweet. Yeah. I've actually yeah. been thinking about some lines that she could, you know, that she could use in, in her speeches. Like one of them, I've been thinking about. It's pretty strong. She could say something like, "When they go low, we go high." <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Or when they go low, we vote. See, these are brilliant things I've been thinking about. She's of. gonna say that. <laughs> I think she will. I mean, the good news is Michelle Obama is out there. She's on the campaign trail now, so there's lots of good new material for Melania. And look, they, they um, were making fun of that at the dinner the other night. It got big laughs. It was fun. They, they weren't really taking it serious. Look, Melania is great. She looks fantastic. She's beautiful. She's like, and amazing. English is her second language. She's yeah. very uh, uh, poised. And I hope she does give a lot of speeches. And I think she's gonna bring out a lot of votes. What do you think, Brendan? I'm excited. Her first line is gonna be I'm a strong black woman. So, <laughs> yeah, so that should be pretty cool. Yeah, I think everyone is. connected. In all look. seriousness, though, she can she can help us campaign. She is a lovely woman, and I think it'd be Why great to lovely? see her. <laughs> what is so lovely about her? She's Do you really want chick. me to describe it? All she is is a hot she chick. She doesn't speak English woman. at all. She just reads what's on the she paper. She doesn't know the definition. Hold on. Woman. She comes across as a mother. How? She, well, for one thing, she has a son. Okay. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so she, she is a mother. That's so, 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 that's the definition. Not to Wait, point I haven't seen her even there. pet the kid's it, head. I don't, usually, I don't know. usually use the the wife to soften the candidate. Yeah. But there was a Bloomberg poll after the convention that showed women hate Melania and guys love her. Yes, uh, uh, she's hot. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, well, we don't this. all hate she's, her, but because no, I don't. I think she's fantastic. And what about? Uh, tr uh, Donald Trump's daughter. Why isn't she out there more? Obviously, yes. she's a huge of asset. Of yes. course. But I, I have a guy has a problem not. with the women vote, yeah. and his, his surrogates <laughs> are Newt, Rudy Giuliani, and Chris Christie. Yes. And he has these, you know, lovely, elegant 
women in his life, and they're almost nowhere to be seen. Occasional interviews, but they should be out there all the time with him. She gave that great speech uh, about, uh, you know, the, the child care, whatever her issue was. Anyway, okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. But it, it, it was me. woman talking. She didn't listen. Was, exactly. <laughs> when Hillary Clinton's private email scandal broke in March of 2015, Republicans were outraged, and so were Hillary's closest allies. One Clinton surrogate, Neera Tandon, was still furious months later, emailing campaign chair John Podesta. Do we actually know who told Hillary she could use a private email? And has that person been drawn and quartered? Like, whole thing is effing insane. Only Hillary can provoke outrage on both the right and the left. I can't think of any other candidate who does that. In another email released by WikiLeaks, <laughs> Podesta writes to Tandon on the day the scandal broke. Speaking of transparency, our friends, David, Kendall, Cheryl, and Philippe Rines, sure weren't forthcoming on the facts here. Tandon replied, this is a Cheryl special. No, you love her, but this stuff is like her Achilles heel or kryptonite. She just can't say no to this <laughs> Why didn't they get this stuff out like 18 months ago? So crazy. Tandon added, I guess I know the answer. They wanted to get away with it. Wow, I love Tandon. While Hillary, while Team Hillary was privately freaking out, they publicly downplayed the private email story. Here's what a campaign spokesman said at the time. Please disperse. <laughs> Nothing to see here, please. <laughs> yes, we used that one again. We used it the other day, but I, I had to do it for, for Rich. <laughs> great. Classic Thank clip. You. Classic. Thank uh, you. Rich, this is stuff is, I mean, we're, we're making light of this email scandal. I mean, the saddest thing is that the, the scandals happen every day, and they're on my desktop computer, but I don't see them showing up on the news shows. Why is that? No, you know, today they began to break through a little bit. You had front page stories on the Clinton Foundation where all these emails are, like, we're, we're uh, getting these donors to also give, uh, Bill Clinton lots of money to give speeches and also to become clients of ours, sort of confirming the whole thing was a political slush fund and had to do with profiteering. And same thing with his emails. They were saying in private what all of us were saying in public, <laughs> and the campaign was publicly denied. Absolutely. I mean, that is the thing that, I mean, is Trump talking about this? I, I didn't hear him give a press conference. I feel like these, these scandals need attention. What, does, what do they have to do to get the attention, Leah? Nothing. I think I just fell asleep with my eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you bored by this? I, I mean, it's just, you know, the same things over and over. You, the Associated Press did a story this morning. They were talking about how this election has, two studies showed that this election has, has had the least amount of actual policy coverage of any election that some of these groups that actually look at coverage from, yeah. from networks um, have studied since like 1988. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like the emails. It's like the groping. It's the one thing or the other. And yeah, I'm getting to the point where I'd like to hear more about policies. Well, if, if Clinton is elected, Brendan, yes. uh, I mean, it's, are, are they going to come after her then? Is the press going to do their sh job, but they're just waiting for her to get into the office? I just feel like right away, important rule, never trust a grandma with email. You know, like, never do it. Like, my grandma's still sending me invites to Christian Mingle. And it's just not, yeah. So it's like, why don't let I, a grandma have email, first of all. Like, why, that's a really important lesson, man. You know, why don't you open the emails? There's probably some nice gals on there, Brendan. Yeah, I know. He's a guys. Catholic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. Are they allowed on that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway. anyway. So. <laughs> you can date anyone you want. Okay. They're looking for, uh, what, what about, what do you think of these emails? I'm sure it doesn't impress it's, you, this stuff. Just select five emails. What? I'm tired of the 30,000. I'm not going to look at 30,000 emails. Take the you five don't, don't tops. The what do you think I did? I don't have them. <laughs> Take, what did I do today? I read you nice emails today. I, don't, I didn't. You were reading emails. I didn't know what it was. I, yes. no clue. I just want five emails. Give me the greatest hits. Give me the number ones. <laughs> yeah. Put them out there. I'm going to read it. Every time you go, there are 30,000 emails. I go, I'm not going to read all the Harry Potters. I know what you just mean. Just give me one. You got to make it simple. Notes. I yes. get it. Okay. Five emails. <laughs> Somebody give me five. I'll read three. All right. <laughs> Remember when uh, cool daddios would burn rubbers so they could play backseat bingo with their babes at lookout point if only we could go back to those days the 1950s a lot of americans feel that way that's right a new study reveals that 51 percent of us think american society as a way of life uh, mm. has changed for the worst yep. since the 1950s and this may surprise you but trump and clinton supporters don't agree on this matter 72 percent of the billionaire's backers want to make like McFly and go back to the future, with only 30% of Hillary voters 
uh, only 30% think things are worse now. The researchers behind the study note, Trump supporters are nostalgic for the 1950s, an era when white Christians in particular had a more political, had more political and cultural power in the country. Yeah, you bet we did. Look how easy it was to get a date. <laughs> <laughs> It seems, <laughs> it seems so quaint now, doesn't it? You did that right before this show. Well, and I, you snapped, you pointed, and I came and I sat down. Look, but I was just trying to, I wanted to get everyone in their correct seat. <laughs> I know, I don't have the power of the funds. He did have a lot of power, though, didn't he, Leah? He had a lot of power. I mean, I was me mesmerized watching that. But no, look, I think... Trump supporters, Clint supporters, I don't know. I think that for people who hate black people, what? the 1950s was a much better era to live in because back then black people had to use different beaches. They had to ride in the back of the bus just because of the color of their skin. And uh, for the most part, they couldn't vote in the South. You're so focusing on the negative, Leah. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and I will say, yes. So, so going back to the 50s, I think people have been watching too much Leave it to Beaver uh, because our country's come a long way since then. Um, positives, I'd say... Uh, it seemed as though there were fewer divorces back then, but that's probably because women had to stay in the home. And men, it was it was okay for men to have affairs, but it wasn't okay for women to divorce their husbands. So I'm having a hard time finding a lot about Hold the 50s. Hold on, I was describing a say, paradise to me. You're say, making a very more, convincing no, argument, Leah. There was, there was, there was I no think rock I'm flip-flopping on this issue. There was no rock and roll I already have the then. haircut. And there were no cell phones. So no, millennials yeah. couldn't survive, which actually, I'd say that's a positive. Uh, Sorry, okay. millennials. There was uh, she did she pointed out a lot of a lot Look, of the negative, but it, Leave It to Beaver was a great show, and they taught a lesson <laughs> okay. every episode. What was the what was the lesson? Usually, Beaver did something wrong, and then he learned what to do something right. See, there was lessons <laughs> in the fifties. Look, yes. I, I, listen, I don't want to go back in time, and I'm a white male, and I'm living in the worst time in history for white males, and I still don't want to go back in time. You know, it's it's good now, but it used to be amazing, right? <laughs> so uh, here's my thing: I just don't want pubic hair again. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but now ladies don't have any pubic hair. Back in the 50s, it was all over the place. Wait, so how do you know that? How do you again? know that? Well, I've dated ladies of all ages, Leah. You know, I don't know. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm going up there. Okay. I've barked up that tree. All right. And that tree is hairy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I don't so, well, they, they probably don't anymore. I Listen, guess that's it is true. What it is, you, you can't know? pick and choose. I guess that's the thing, right, Brendan? I don't want to go back in time, but maybe if you, if you look back, you can learn something from the values of yesteryear. Do you think that's true? Yeah, I learned an important lesson never be gay. <laughs> that's right. that's something black. you learned from that? Or, or dance, or uh, have emotions, yeah, it, or cry. That's a very, as a guy, if you cried in the 50s, I think you get would get electroshock therapy. Mm. Yeah, you So get, I would fail miserably, man. You would? Come on, you're a... You 50 are. sucks. So look, look, 50 sucks. So all that and the pubic hair. 51% of the country can't be wrong, right, Rich Lowry? 51% of the country doesn't want to shave their pubic hair anymore. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to call my grandma and ask about this one. Oh, I think... Too much I think Andrew does have a point, but so so if it was so bad, <laughs> yeah. then why why does the majority of the country think it would be great? To well, work? actually, both the left and the right do this. You read Paul Krugman; he's always hearkening back to the wonderful economy we had in the 1950s and mm -hmm. how it was more equitably shared wealth in the country. And the right tends to look back and say we are more cult culturally cohesive, and that was wonderful. But we're obviously never going back to the 50s. We're a wealthier and more just and open society now. So both the left and the right should give up that dream and adjust to the new circumstances. Mm. Rich Lauer, he always makes so much sense. Okay, coming up, <laughs> a t-shirt says something offensive. When will t-shirts learn to just keep their mouth shut? In Britain, a petition is demanding that a supermarket stop selling a children's shirt because it's offensive. The shirt's message is provocative. As you can see, critics say it's insensitive to the mentally ill. The petition states, anyone suffering mental health conditions that involve having meltdowns as a symptom deserve understanding and acceptance. The UK's National Autistic Society also condemned the shirt, noting that when autistic children and adults lose control of their behavior, a quote, a lot of families and people on the autism spectrum call this a meltdown or a shutdown. Mm. That may be true. Leah, uh, it is true, but the thing is meltdown means many things, does it not? Yes, it does. Yes, and in so fact, 
you know, first of all, I want to say that um, I know that people who have autistic people in their family, that there's a lot of challenges. And yeah. it's, you know, the autism uh, spectrum uh, disorder, I think, association. I think that's the correct title. I could be wrong there. But they're basically saying, you know, bright lights, loud noises can cause what they actually call a meltdown. But, says the snowman, yes. you don't get to own the word meltdown. Mm. That's right. Snowmen melt too, right? Yes. 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 And, I would, and I would say they probably have problems with meltdowns a lot more than others. <laughs> if anyone has a problem yeah. with a melting, remember what happened to Frosty when he went in that uh, greenhouse, Brendan? Oh, he melted right away. Man. He did. Yeah, yeah. And in fairness, every snowman I've ever seen looks a little mentally ill. That just came out. <laughs> the the eyes, eyes are always yeah. a little cockeyed. They got a little. Like, I mean, snowmen have they have their yeah. own set of problems, right? right? So they got their yeah, own things. It's hard going to make on, those man. little pieces of coal. Look, yeah, look, look, look right. symmetrical. Yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah, coal. That's the classic. Uh, yeah, where do we get coal? It's hard. It's hard to get lumps of coal in yeah. West Virginia. Right. Great snowmen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get them in your stocking at Christmas. Uh, I think I still do. Rich, uh, the is this PC thing is it's gone a little too far. You can't make any T-shirts anymore. Yeah, and look, this if if this were a term that only applied to mentally ill or autistic people, maybe yeah. they have a case. Mm -hmm. But we all refer to ourselves as having meltdowns. Oh yeah. People absolutely. around us having meltdowns. Yes. What make what gives you a meltdown, Rich? Mm. Um, what gives me a meltdown? meltdown you Rich. don't want to see me meltdown. Tom. I don't. <laughs> I definitely don't. Schultz, uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, you seem to think you know what causes. I causes know what it. gives. Are you, are you trying to melt me down right here? I know what it is. Okay, <laughs> a big tuft of pubic no, hair. Yeah. That's what gives a meltdown. Hair, that's right. <laughs> Let's take a dip back in the Bush administration. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, is, yeah, is the shirt? <laughs> yes. Uh, is it offensive to anyone else? I mean. I mean, Look, the only way this shirt is offensive if, is if you have a burn victim on it. Uh, because they, you know, they, they're they literally be, melting. They don't want to be. You yeah, know. That would be rude. Mm -hmm. If you had somebody who was burning and melting, then I'd be like, eh, I don't wear that shirt. But if you got Olaf, but you know, what should we <laughs> cater ourselves <laughs> well, to people who, you know, to the most sensitive people? The right people and the left us. use these microaggressions the same way. Right? The left uses it to pat themselves on the back. Like, look, I'm such a good person. I'm helping out victims. And yes. the right uses it to be like, look how stupid the left is. It's just like, stop using the nonsense. Let's not give 200 people credibility by even talking about this dumb story. Well, it's interesting because I think you have to talk I about it. I just said smart things. Look. You kind of, <laughs> you said people come at it from both sides, but I think yeah. that what, what is happening is the, the ones who are trying to restrict commerce, mm -hmm. am I right about this, Rich? They're you the are. ones who are trying to stop us from, you know, the, the fact that we're raising our voices, I mean, we're are defending. Are the voices I, raised I take this personally people. because the research provided for this segment was actually a National Review article. Ah, oh. yes. Right. And that's why we that's know right. this, this story is This was a Catherine Timp article, was it not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I read Timp every morning. But so. only 250 signatures. That's well, nothing. All right. Right? What stores is all that? Look, I think we made a good point and you're mad about it. Coming up, <laughs> he tells it like it is. It's Andy Levy with Halftime. That's next. <laughs> Welcome back. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> Uh, Trump says the people he insults on Twitter deserve it. Uh, Schultz, you said you're in favor of insulting, that you believe in public shaming. I actually do. Yeah, that's disgusting. You're a pig. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Andy. Okay? And your chin, which isn't there. Where'd it go? Where's my chin? <laughs> We've been trying to figure that out. Okay? All right. Uh, Rich, you said you don't mind the insults, except they're so sophomoric and you wish they were better. What would be better insults for Trump to tweet at you? Anything that doesn't involve the word sad, loser, incompetent, anything that's just a little, little unexpected or has a little twist to it, okay. I think would be better. What about incontinent? <laughs> oh, that'd be better than a lot of them, yes. That's, that'd be more that, fun, that's, wouldn't it? That's a big word. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, Brendan, you said you don't really see Washington or Lincoln as tweeters, that they were uh, duelers. Right. Important to remember, first of all, Lincoln was also a vampire hunter. Oh, okay. Um, also, I checked out the circumstances of that Lincoln duel you guys were talking about, or the duel that almost happened. And I, this is uh, James Shields, the guy who challenged Lincoln to a duel. He was mad about letters that Abe and his wife had gotten published in a newspaper. So he said, I have become the object of slander, vituperation, and personal abuse. Only a full retraction may prevent consequences which no one will regret more than myself. That's a good tweet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Yes. Yes. That is just like Trump. Exactly. That's yeah. really it is good. the same, though. It's, this, it's no different. It, but it's so much better said. Yeah, they spoke really well. It's, yeah. like it's, worse. Like, yeah. it's all about personal honor, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Vituperation. Yes. What you is got the counterpunch? Yeah. Jake yeah. Shields was it's a counterpunch. It's an excellent word. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. What does it mean? So that's I have word. no idea, but it's an excellent word. Word of the day for O'Reilly. Yeah. Andy, Andy, what does yeah. vituperation mean? I don't know. I have to move on. Come okay, on. fine. <laughs> uh, Leah, you said someone who tweets is a Twitterer, not a tweeter? That's what I read. I don't think that's right. I think it's right. It doesn't sound right. Prove it. I can't. Uh, Trump said Melania will be giving th two or three speeches. Rich, you noted that there was a poll after the convention that said that uh, men liked Melania and women didn't. Why do you think that is? Mm. It might be because she's extremely hot mm -hmm. third wife, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that works for me. Uh, Tom, you asked why Ivanka hasn't been out there more. Yes. Probably because she's smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what? what? Why? <laughs> Why is that smart, smart though? Because she knows what's happening. But, you know, we know she's there. It's not like, oh, who's nah, that? She's but related least... to someone. I don't know who that is. Yeah, <laughs> I think she's just, I think she's decided to stay in the background. I could be wrong. I think he's wrong. I, I think she is vituperating, getting ready for the yeah. next push. You know, like last week, <laughs> really got to get your vituperation down. Yeah. Last push. Yeah. Absolutely. That makes Vituperate. sense. Vituperate. Hashtag it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, WikiLeaks stuff shows Clinton people were mad about the private server. Tom, you said you love Neera Tandon. Yeah. Well, first of all, don't do that. She's generally awful. Uh, but I really didn't like when she wrote, the, this is one of the things you read that she wrote about Cheryl Mills in one of the emails. She yeah. said, this stuff is like her Achilles heel or kryptonite. You don't need both. I, you don't. <laughs> Was she afraid John Podesta wouldn't understand the Achilles heel reference? It <laughs> <laughs> is a classical <laughs> reference. You, you never know. I, I'm going to guess Podesta knows what an Achilles heel is. I don't know. Uh, Leah, you said this is just the same thing over and over again with these emails. Yeah, that is the downside of the staggered releasing that WikiLeaks is doing. The upside, obviously, it keeps stuff in the news longer, but the downside is people start tuning out, much like you did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I just exactly. fell asleep with my eyes. Exactly. Uh, Andrew, you said they should just select five emails, just put out the greatest hits. Yeah. Uh, Just the number ones, like in the Michael Jackson album. Yeah, sure. No, that might have been a better way for, for WikiLeaks to have done this. You also said you're not going to read all the Harry Potters? Uh, no, no. Did you uh, read one of them? Sorry? Did you even read one of them? No, no, because uh, I, I, I had sex with girls in high school. Sure. Because <laughs> they're so, more than five pages. Yeah, okay. I didn't have time. I was using my wand for different stuff. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand that reference. <laughs> uh, Rich, do you think that this stuff would be getting more attention if the Republicans had nominated almost anyone else? Yes. <laughs> uh, Trump supporters want to go back to the 50s. Tom, you talked about the power that the Fonz had. Yeah. Well, sure, but in order to have that power in the 50s, a Jewish person had to act like he was Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Andy, That was the only way. Things were simple. That was the only way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leah, you said there was no rock and roll back then. Right. I mean, that's just not true. That's the decade that rock and roll started in. Okay, but rock and roll really blossomed it after the 50s. <laughs> it started then, but you didn't have Metallica. <laughs> A fair point. What? <laughs> you did not Hold have Metallica. On. Hold on, what? <laughs> this that is great. Because Leah's peach dress really screams yes. Metallica. <laughs> you should have seen my hair before this. Uh, Rich, you said the right tends to look back and say, <laughs> Rich, you said the right tends to look back uh, and say, why do people start talking when I, when I talk? Like, it should be the opposite of that. You hear someone else talking, that's when you stop. That's just common sense and courtesy. Uh, Rich, you said the right tends to look back and say we were culturally more cohesive back in the 50s. I mean, that's one way of saying white. Yeah, but just politically in all sorts of ways, uh, there was more consensus in our society. We're more fragmented in all sorts of ways now. So I race was one element of it. It wasn't the only one. Yeah, I don't know that we were. I think it's just that people kept their mouths shut. Well, that's one uh, aspect of a cohesive society. That is true. Uh, the Meltdown t-shirt. <laughs> Rich, you said if this were a term that only applied to autistic people, they might have a case, but it doesn't. Yeah, it, to make it worse, the head of the UK's National Autistic Society, what she said was, she said, quote, a lot of families and people on the autism spe spectrum call this a meltdown or a shutdown. 
So now no one can say shut down either? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. What are we going to do when Ted Cruz gets after it in Washington again? Right, what exactly. We, what are we going to call it? I mean, the fact is, yeah. those words were appropriated by the autism community, ah. which is totally fine because they took them to mean, you know, something that applies to them. But you can't do that and then tell everyone who was previously using them, oh, you can't use them anymore. Very acute, Andy. It makes no sense. Huh. Uh, that said, Andrew, I sort of agree with you on this whole thing. This is, to me, this is the example of how the right and the left need each other. I think, honestly, this is all a conspiracy to keep people employed. Ooh. Because I think a lot of people would be out of work if they couldn't talk or write about stuff like this. Like the yes. pe people on both sides going too far. That's right. So this I, is I think job everyone, security. I think everyone's in on it together, including us. Great. Yep. Oh, my Lord. Yep. I'm done. Thank you, Andy. I'm not in on it. <laughs> oh, you are in on it. Coming up, scientists have discovered an elixir of youth. Sadly, it's not scotch. American scientists, my favorite kind, claim to have discovered a natural compound that has remarkable anti-aging effects in mice. And it could also work on humans. When the compound, known as NMN, was added to the mice's drinking water, their level of physical activity increased, bone density and muscles improved, the immune system and liver performed better, their eyesight improved, and they even lost weight. And are you sure they didn't give them cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> The results are <laughs> I would know. I've never had that substance. The, the results are staggering as the older mice suddenly had metabolism similar to that of young mice. Here's a pre-NMN mouse, and here's the same mouse two weeks later. <laughs> 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 the researchers are hopeful that this product can work to rejuvenate human cells as well. I'm one of the first volunteers. I must say it's working wonders. Let's remind viewers of what I looked like a mere four weeks ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See? Simply stunning. Uh, the only downside is I glow in the dark. That's a, that's a handsome man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. Uh, look, Schultz. Yes. Would you? Could, you don't have to worry about this thing. You're a young guy, but you're not going to be not young too forever. Young. Huh? I'm 32. You're 32. That's yeah. Well, look, I think you're you're in the prime of your life, and it's only going to get better, Schultz. All right, I'm. I mean, I'm with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm cool okay. with it. I'm waiting but for that. Would you take an elixir if you could? Would you start taking it now? As a white person, yeah, I think we should give this to white people. Yeah. What, why? 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 Why is it, Why is white people? Well, because we age horribly compared to everybody else. I mean, we age like guacamole. Uh, what, I don't know. Did you see that guy? Did you see the future Tom Shalou there? He looked pretty good. That guy was 17 years old. Okay. Yeah, this is what people don't know. Tom is 16. Okay. White people age horribly. Black people obviously age in like Celsius or some other thing. So we need to get whatever they're on. Maybe uh, they're doing the cucumber thing. I see. Well, rich. Uh, <laughs> Just jump right over. Yeah, I think you know you make you make a point. I don't know if it's a good point, but you make a point. Hey, rich. It's true we age the worst rich uh what do you Look think at rich it's always <laughs> this guy's 11 years old <laughs> he looks great but it's always doesn't it always seem like the human trial it's are years off i mean they give it to the mice the mice do better so, so just the give mice. it to me i'll eat it the mice are are living wonderful lives like 100 years from what <laughs> yeah. from, from yes. now humans be lucky to be where the mice are right now remember the red wine but they gave like, them red wine broccoli cucumber and i was looking down in the story to see you know any other substances but the the other alternatives are cabbage and edamame. Yeah. So maybe the edamame. Edamame. But, yeah, but the rest. Ed Is that how you say it? Edamame. Edamame. Sorry. Yeah. Stand corrected. And there's also yeah. avocado. But this will, this will yes. happen. You know, we'll be living to 120. And will that be a good thing? I mean, Leah, our, our healthcare system is strained now, and it's mostly end of life care. Is it good that people are going to be hanging on forever? I'm not going to answer that question, but I will say that I'm 95, and I've been eating a lot of M&Ms. Yeah. So oh, I think that those work, too. Beautiful. What's They're your very... background, though? What's your, are you Italian or something like that? I'm not going to tell you because you're going to start judging me yes. with regards to the whole thing. <laughs> you're, you're, you've been nice to her, but... She, he judged I, all <laughs> ethnicities by pubic hair. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I but I'm just, no, I just you want know. to know, if you don't want to eat cabbage, broccoli, avocado, cucumbers, yeah. then can you just eat the mice? Or can we just start feeding those things to fish and put it yeah. in the whole food chain? That's it. And then right. be healthier. Start with the healthy mice, and then they, you know, the, the predators eat them. I think that's a good idea. Brendan? Yeah. I see it now, man. I see all these mice, this mice fad. 
taken off at CrossFit. <laughs> These people lifting weights and afterwards, <laughs> protein shake, mouse, yes. right down the gut. Dude. <laughs> Whatever, it's a new thing, man. Just CrossFit being a bro. I mean, it might work. It uh, could. Yeah. But I, I look the the. Uh, uh, I'm what? Shalou, tell us. I'm gonna, tell us. I would take this stuff. I'm ready to buy it. I'm you ready look to look incredible. What are you talking about? Look, I I, uh, I I try to I I try to eat well and whatnot, but uh -huh. the I don't understand why they have to be so careful with these trials. It's like, let me eat the edamame. Right away. Yes, I'll take it. I don't care about, you don't have to do it on the rats. Yeah. It's like, just give it right to the human. Well, then do it. Eat the broccoli, eat the edamame, do what you got to do. Shave your pubic hair. Look. <laughs> <laughs> you know how young you would look with a nice landing strip? <laughs> like, beautiful with a landing and strip. And how do you know that he does not He We're might. Go. You look, look, or a triangle. I'm going to go to a commercial. Coming up. <laughs> a triangle. A bedtime story. Good God. What other, what other? Tomorrow on the next Red Eye, Anna Lacey, Anthony Cumia, Michael Malice, and Ray Ellen. Great news for all you venison lovers. Arby's is planning to sell venison burgers for a limited time in six lucky states. Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Georgia, Michigan, and Wisconsin, a.k.a. the venison belt. The sandwiches come <laughs> <laughs> with a uh, thick cut venison steak, crispy onions, and a berry sauce inside a toasted roll. I mean, it's making me hungry. Let's take a look at how venison is made. <laughs> That's a classic, classic film. <laughs> Leah, I think this is a great idea. Some of the people on the staff, they thought, they, they thought it sounded unappetizing. Have you ever had venison? I have had venison. I think it's pretty good. But I will say anything on a crispy bun with berry sauce and like the little fried onions on top yeah. is just going to have to taste good. I mean, you can pretty much put anything in there. You can put you know, a slab of liver in there probably. Absolutely. I think <laughs> we need to expand our... <laughs> Could you put pubic hair in there? No, what? <laughs> What are you? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. You are obsessed oh, no, with no, pubic no, hair. No, 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 oh, sorry. no more. All right, please. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Brendan, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to expand our meat. We, How can you make a venison segment about pubic hair? <laughs> we did it. We did it, Rich. All right, I just learned venison was deer, by the way. I had no clue. It's deer meat, and it's good. I had no clue. I thought it was steak. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to start eating buffalo, Brendan. Right. Venison. We got to get away from the beef. I mean, it's, we have too much of it. I True. don't trust. But I will say this: now with this new burger, I will not trust any Arby's by a Highway because it was simply <laughs> just might be venison. Scoop, oh, it. Yeah. scoop yes. the road, scoop and eat. Yeah. Do you think, I don't think they would do that. I think they go to uh, legitimate dealers and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. like a Highway Roadkill dealers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. The legitimate guys. Well, they're out there. Rich, you go out to these states. I mean, forget about it. Go to Connecticut. Go to, you know, Yonkers. There's deer walking around. Mm. We ought to use them and eat them up, right? I don't know. Doesn't that thing look incredibly tough? Uh, do, you, do you really think that's you can eat that comfortably? I think it's tougher than your, your average, uh, you know, it's not like a hamburger, mm. but they're serving a steak. I mean, I think it's high quality. And you're going to take that over, like, roast beef? Uh, y you know what? I love Arby's. <laughs> When you're on the road, it doesn't, but it doesn't mean you have to eat the venison at Arby's. Yeah, I, don't know, I think I would try it. I, I have, you, too. have you ever had a buffalo burger from, from Arby's? From anywhere? I have had a, a bison. Is that a buffalo? Bison. That's what. It, yeah. I mean, I, it's bison. Are they the same thing or not? Well, it's a little bit. There you got bison. I think is, is Canadian. Or, I'll be honest. I went to public school. We didn't learn a lot about those things. It's a little bit different. I think yeah. bison and buffalo. But right, I'm supportive. Got... Yeah, I, I think I would eat a bison. I would also eat a deer, and I'd, I'd probably eat, um, you know, a. Uh, Dwarf. <laughs> That's not nice. That wasn't nice. No. That was a I don't think thing you to would. say. Well, I'm gonna go. Oh, come on, that's like veal. I'm gonna yeah. introduce the whole panel here. Very special thanks. Leah Gabriel, <laughs> Brendan Fitzgibbons, Rich Lowry, and Andrew Schultz. Hi. That does it for me. I'm Tom Schul, your host, and I'll see you next time.